Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Alex. Welcome back. Today, I'm doing a popular test, which is pitting my MacBook Air M1. It's just MacBook Air against the MacBook Pro Intel Core i9 with 64 gigs of RAM, really beefy machine right here, and against the MacBook Air. So what are we doing today? We're gonna be building a popular computer vision library called OpenCV, and it takes a little bit of time to compile, a lot of time to compile. And we're gonna see which one of these machines is gonna do it faster. This comes at a request from a few of the commenters on my channel that have been watching the channel for a while. Mike Roylens, thank you very much for that. Starlight, good idea, and Sergei Gay Bukriev, thank you very much for suggesting this as well. Oh, and stay till the end because I'm going to tell you how you can win a JetBrains license. All right, folks, without any further ado, let's get on with the test. So this is a popular open source project and is available on opencv.gov. Here's the documentation for it. And also I found the tutorial on their website of how to build this for Mac using Make and CMake. Here's the URL right here. You can go look it up yourself. You can build it yourself if you want. And there's also instructions for Linux and Windows, I'm sure. Although I haven't tried those, we are going to do this now on the two Macs that I have right here. So I already have all the prerequisites. I have CMake installed, I have Git, and of course I have Python. If you don't have CMake installed, you can always use Homebrew to install it. And the instructions are right here. So the first thing you got to do is download the source code, which I've already done. And then this suggests creating a separate directory for the build process. So let's do that now. I'm gonna make a new directory called build open CV. And I wanna mirror the same exact things that I'm doing on the MacBook M1 and the Intel MacBook. So I'm gonna create that directory here as well. There's our new directory. Let's go into the directory. This is kind of weird, typing at the same time on these. It's not very efficient, but it's possible. So now that I've done that, the next instruction says we're gonna build it. So I'm gonna build it using this command right here, which is CMake, and it's gonna copy all that stuff that we need from the previous directory that I've downloaded. So I'm gonna execute that command here and here as well. Now. I also wanna time this as well because this takes a little bit of time, not as long as the actual build, but I wanna give it the time command just so that we have an idea of what we're dealing with. By the way, for those of you that are interested, and I know some of you like to know the results before watching the rest of the video, the MacBook M1 is going to win this in every instance of any test that I've run by quite a lot. There you go, you have the answer. Now, if you actually wanna see how this happens and the results of each build, I'm gonna be doing iterative builds as well here, then you can keep watching. So here is the CMake command. I'm gonna execute it at the same time. Let's do it. And you can see that even visually, the M1 is just kicking butt right now. It's just flying through it, whereas this one is chugging through it. Flying, chugging, flying, chugging. And there we go. The M1 is done. This one is still working. The results are 11.44 seconds for the CMake command on the M1. And this one is still working. Don't worry, this is not the longest test. That's coming up. Okay, here we go. This one is finished in 30.55 seconds. So considerably longer, almost three times longer on the Intel Mac. And it's an i9 processor too. By the way, if you're new here, I've mentioned this before, this machine, the MacBook Pro, cost me about 3,800 bucks, whereas this one is only 1,200. On to the next step. So after we've done the CMake command, you'll see that there's a bunch of new files here. If I go LS, you'll see all these new files that were copied over and pre-built from the download directory. Now, the next command is actually to run make. This is the command that's going to build that code. Now, this instruction says that you can actually run it in parallel, several tasks at once using make-j7 as the option. I'm going to run make as a standalone command, doing everything in serial and after we get those results then I'll add the J7 command to run seven jobs in parallel to see if there's any difference so let's start with the make command and all you got to do to run that is make but before I run that I'm gonna add the time command of course and I'm gonna do the same thing here on my MacBook Pro. Now, once I press this, it's gonna keep going and I'm gonna have to pause the video so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. All right, I've got both of these machines set up now to time the make command and I'm gonna kick off the Intel one. There we go. And now I'll kick off the M1. Uh, hang on just a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait? Don't execute it yet. Just wait. How long should I wait? Just wait, okay? Trust me. It'll be okay, just wait. I mean, this thing's already going. I'm supposed to be doing this at the same time, right? I know, but 
it's okay. This thing's already at 4% on the Intel Mac. Can I start this? Not yet. Hold on. Okay, I'll wait. All right, thank you. But it's a race. It's fine. We're supposed to see who finishes first. I know. Okay, I'll wait. So while I'm waiting, I just wanna show you this real quick. The starting out battery here on the Intel is 96%. That's the battery right now. And on the M1, we're at 58%. Just so you know that. We'll take a look at that at the end. What's, what's that noise? Oh, it's the Intel. All right, we're, we're at 10% now. Can I, can I kick off the other build, please? Okay. The M1 build? Okay, fine. Just do it. Yeah? Okay. We're gonna kick off the M1 build now. Let's see if it can catch up. All right, folks, I've been uh, sitting here for a little bit and waiting and I saw that the M1 finished already. It took 1,480 seconds to finish that build on the M1 while the Intel MacBook Pro is still at 58%. So I see what you mean by that. Yep, told you so. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer until this one finishes and we'll review the results. All right, folks, we've been waiting here for a while. I'm gonna tell you how long in a minute here, but we're finally at almost 100% on the Intel build, and it's done now for a total of 2,998 seconds. A quick calculation tells me that that's almost 50 minutes. And this one took 1480 seconds, which is about 24 minutes, two times faster. Now, this is not a fluke. I've actually sat here and watched the whole thing happen. And I've done this a couple times. So $4,000 machine versus a $1,200 machine is, is actually two times slower. Ah, let's check the temperature on this thing real quick. This one is at 43 degrees. It did go up to 46 when I was doing the tests. And this one is at 29. It was up to 32 right after the build. So about 10 degree difference between them. And let's finally take a look at the battery. Now, right now the battery is at 56% on the Intel jumping down from 96. So that's a 40% drop. And this one is at 47% down from 59, 12% drop. <sighs> so pretty incredible results here. Now that should already be pretty impressive. I'm going to do one more build and that's going to be in parallel using that J7 flag. But in order to do that, I'm going to blow away everything and start over. So I'm going to rm-rf that build directory. Let's recreate it one more time. And I'm going to run that cmake initial command and do the same thing on this machine. All right. And finally, I'm going to time the make command, but this time I'm going to pass that J7 flag to it. And according to the documentation, this is going to run seven jobs in parallel. So it should take considerably less time on both machines. Now, because of the way the Intel machines work, they actually function a little bit differently when they're plugged in versus when they're not plugged in. And although I prefer to test these machines not plugged in, since that's how I use my laptop is mostly when I'm traveling, when I'm remote, when I'm at a coffee shop, I don't always have it plugged in. So I like to test it in the worst case possible, which is not plugged in. So I'm going to plug it in only the Intel machine this time and see if that helps it out a little bit because it needs the help. All right. And I'm going to execute time make dash J7 here as well. All right. Can I run these at the same time now? Sure. Go ahead. All right. Thanks. Boom, off they go. I'm also gonna stop the screen recording on both of these and I'll see you when it's done. Oh my God, can you even hear me? This thing is so loud. Okay, 44 degrees. This one is at 33, but the MacBook M1 admittedly did go up to 39 degrees during the build. So it did get pretty warm, but this one is hot and it's loud. All right, let's review the results of this parallel build. So on the M1, we've got 2,500 seconds. That's the user time and that's the time that I was reporting. Actually, since this ran in parallel, that time is reported to be much higher than the total amount of time that it took. This is the number we're supposed to be looking at right here, six minutes and 23 seconds, which is the clock time is how long this actual build took to run. And that is pretty consistent with what I saw. So in the previous build where I did it not in parallel, but everything was in serial, that time was actually pretty much the same between the total time and the user time in seconds. So that's why 
why it was okay for me to report 1480 seconds, which is about how long it took total on clock time as well. But now that we are doing it in parallel, I have to report the total time. So on the Intel machine, this took 10 minutes and 16 seconds total. Not quite two times faster on the M1, but still a lot a heck of a lot faster. Let's take a quick glance at the battery as well. We're plugged in on the Intel machine, but still we're at 58% while on the M1 we're at 41% now. If this was unplugged, we'd probably be near death on the Intel at this point. So there you have it, folks. That's the results of this build. Now there's one more thing we got to do, and that's the JetBrains license giveaway. Thanks to JetBrains for providing one of you folks with a license. They've given me a bunch of these licenses to hand out to you folks. We're going to do raffles and uh, there's there's been a bunch of winners already in the past few weeks so that's been fun so here's how you enter to win make sure you like this video give it a thumbs up that also helps the channel out and helps other people find this content you have to subscribe to the channel and you got to tell me down below what software stack you use for your development that's it for me today thanks a lot for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and if you're not subscribed yet do consider subscribing to the channel and if you give me a thumbs up really appreciate it helps me out quite a bit thank you folks and i'll see you in the next video